Hey everyone, this is Lisette Perez Carrillo with EP Carrillo Cigars. Here I am with David Spirit, one of our most knowledgeable team members. He's going to talk to us today about cutting a cigar. And David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm David Spirit. Like Lisette told you, I'm the vice president for EP Carrillo Cigar Company. I've been smoking cigars now for over 30 years, and I'm a huge student of the tobacco industry and the cigar industry. And obviously, Lisette, I've enjoyed our tenure together here at this organization. And today we're going to have some uh, conversations about different cigar sizes and how to cut them properly. And you're also someone mm -hmm. that my dad goes to to tell him what you think about his blends, the that tester is, blends. That is true. That's so, very true. He yep. knows his stuff. <clears throat> so David, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how do you cut a big green gauge cigar like the inch? As many of you may know, my dad uh, specializes in a way, so to speak, uh, with big ring gauges. It's something he's been doing for many, many years and was one of the first cigar makers to put big ring gauges in the market. So David, what would you use to cut the inch, for example? This is a 62 ring gauge. Yeah, so my personal preference on a large cigar like this is a straight cut. Um, I find that it opens it the most. However, I do see a lot of people using a V cut, a punch cut on it. I prefer the straight cut. The reason for that is it gives me the most smoke output and gives me the entire profile of the cigar on my palate. One of the things that a lot of people ask about cigars though when they do a straight cut, especially on a large cigar like this, is the challenge of how do you cut it properly. Okay. So what I try to tell a lot of people is think about the very top of the cigar, the head of the cigar here versus the foot, which is the part you like down here, as though it's the shoulder on your body. <laughs> and what you really want to look at is the rounded side here where you're not cutting too deep or down here, but you're also not cutting too short or up here. You're kind of cutting in between the very top and where it begins to roll into the shoulder. So sort of in the middle. Okay. And if I can demonstrate it for you, I'd like to show you. For me, it's a very simple cut and it's decisive. There's a little bit on an angle there, but that is exactly the right spot you wanna cut. And as you can see, it opens the cigar all the way up so you get a full output on the cigar. That is for this for the big ring gauge cigar. And, and you'd also and you'd so also much. use that straight cut for other sizes of cigars as well, right? <laughs> well, for me, a straight cut is this, is the cut that I use probably ninety percent of the time. Okay. The reason is is that especially with your dad, when I'm trying to smoke the blend and understand what he put into it, it gives me the most example of the whole blend. Okay. Yeah. So when you use a, a V cut or a punch cut, you're deferring the smoke to act differently. And it really doesn't grab the entire dimension of the cigar, so to speak. But I like V cuts. That's probably my second choice. And for certain cigars, I actually do punch cut. I also do sometimes, which the old school masters do, I use my fingernails when I can or you know, if you're in a pinch, you know, I've you had can to use, do that myself. Yeah, you can use a knife, a pocket knife. You can use many things to cut a cigar. But my three choices are laid out here between a straight, a V, and a punch cut. Absolutely. So. <clears throat> yes. And you talk about that in the blog as well. Yes, I do. So, yeah. so here. And others yeah. <laughs> in the blog. So here we go with a box press. Uh, this is the Encore. <clears throat> it is uh, one of the lines in the Encore um, series, in the Perez Carrillo series, mm -hmm. of which we got the number one cigar of the year for the Encore Majestic. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you do in the case of a box press? So a box, sorry. So a box press, um, again, my first go-to choice is a straight cut, but Sometimes I have a real enjoyment to smoke this differently and I'll V cut a box press, which a lot of people look at and go, well, that's strange because why would you V cut? And if you think about a straight cut, this being the upper side and the lower side of a box cut cigar, a box press cigar, why would you cut it this way? I don't. I'm going to show you how I personally cut it. I actually use a V cutter and I make the cut to look more like this so that you get a V cut across this way and I'll show it to the camera also and you get a nice deep V in your cut, which opens a lot of surface area, actually probably in this case more so than you'd get with a straight cut. So that's why I would V cut a box press more often than I might a regular Vitol. Oh, very interesting, <clears throat> yep. interesting. And where would you use the V cut in a regular cigar that's not box pressed? Um, Does it depend on your mood? What what goes into the uh, it equation depends, for that? It depends on my mood. It also depends a little bit on the ring gauge. A lot of V-cutters today don't open enough. 
So if you're to use a V cutter on a big ring gauge, like a 62 or 64, there's even 70s and 80s out there, you're not really getting a deep groove like you did in this scenario. You're getting something more that's scratching the surface. So unless you find a V cutter that's very open, which those do exist out there in the marketplace, you're not getting that nice deep V. The other option you have is you can multi-cut it. So one of the things that you see a lot on the big ring gauge is when someone prefers a V-cut is they do like a cross cut where instead of just doing one line, they'll cross it and make it like an X okay. so that you get more surface area opened up and more output from the smoke. Okay. All right. That's really interesting. So um, I guess the next one would be a Robusto size. This is our new wave Connecticut. It's also one of our top sellers. Um, so what would you do in the case of, of this cigar and here... We have one of our interlude cigars as well, very small cigar, yeah. um, smaller ring gauges. So tell us what your preference is with these sizes. So for both of these, on the Robusto, here you're wide open. You can almost do anything you want on this cigar because just about every cigar cutter in the marketplace will work with this cigar. Okay. Now when you start getting into smaller, and I'm going to pass on cutting that one because I want to show our third cut. When you get okay. to smaller cigars, I tend to prefer a very small opening. Okay. on a small cigar. So for me, I'm not a fan of what you see out there, which is a lot of people that poke the end of the cigar and create a small hole. I prefer to go to an actual punch. Now a punch is designed based on an old school idea that this was something that people would fashion themselves and became more in the mainstay, okay. you know, over the past years, multiple years. Okay. And the idea behind the punch is you're actually putting just a small hole back here. The only trick with the punch that I tell a lot of people is, contrary to a V cut or a straight cut, you have to be a little more diligent and gentle. You don't want to apply a ton of pressure going in. You want to basically sort of screw back and forth the punch until it gets to this point where it's all the way in, and then a quick pull out and you create a punch. Oh, let me see. Okay. <clears throat> Now this opens the airway up, and if you show it to the camera so people can see how the punch did, this opens the airway up that you can now draw on it and you get a nice output of smoke, but you also are not damaging the cigar because there is a tendency with a smaller cigar for a lot of people to cut it too deep. When you cut a straight cut or a V cut too deep, you run the risk of the cigar unraveling. And what happens if you cut something, a cigar of this size, mm -hmm. not properly? Um, any cigar with a straight cut, if it's cut too deep, uh, and that's the issue with a lot of the straight cutters out there, if you don't cut it in the right spot, you wind up creating that the cigar can unravel because there's only so much of the vegetable glue that's used to hold the cigar shut at the very end. Once you go beyond that, then the wrapper starts to unravel itself and that becomes a problem. Now, there are patch kits that are sold out there on the market for people that they can buy little vials of the, the glue that's used to hold our, you know, the, the natural organic vegetable glue that's used to hold scars together, mm -hmm. that you can fix that. But my suggestion quite often is, is that you make sure you cut it right. Now, there is a cheat, which I don't particularly like to do, on a lot of straight cutters because there's only so much depth to it. A lot of people, and I'll show it, let me move this out of the way for a second, I'll show it you know, on this cigar, I won't actually do it, but if you take the cigar, you keep the cutter on the table and you go down to the table, mm -hmm. and then you snap it shut while it's on a flat surface, Okay. you create almost a perfect cut. And that's why there's a lot of straight cut cigar cutters in the marketplace that instead of it being open through as this one is, it has a back on it so that you can actually cut and you get the same depth every single time. The downside to that is that Unlike your father's cigars, where he makes a very traditional rounded head, there are cigars out there that have a more flat head. And when you have a, a cigar that the top of it looks very flat, it doesn't leave a lot of room for error. Okay. And if you cut too deep, you run into that problem. And a perfect cut sometimes can cut too deep. So it really is beneficial to learn the way a cigar is made that you're about to cut, especially with a straight cutter or scissors, so that you cut in the right spot. Kind of, and I use my shoulder as an example, kind of if you think about you know, this is the top of the cigar, this is the side of the cigar, and here's where the shoulder starts to round up. You almost want to cut just below the top part of the round. So you cut about here on my butt, on my shoulder. It would be at this spot, okay. spot versus way down here. Okay. <clears throat> One thing I was thinking about as you were speaking is, how about if for some reason you only have this with you and you have this cigar? What would you do in that case? In that case, I'd put multiple punches in it. Okay. So I would do one in the center, and then I would kind of work out a little bit. So I create maybe either a cross look 
where I might do two side by side. Okay. You know, it just depends on how big the cigar is. If you only had a punch, I carry a punch on my key ring because you never know when someone offers you a cigar and I don't have, I always have a cutter with me, but it's happened where I've walked out, out of the house and forgot to grab my cutter and lighter. I can always find a match somewhere, but I can never always find a cutter. And when you get a large ring gauge, Using your fingernail, it's a bit of a talent. It's not something that you're going to do as easily. Small, a Robusto or smaller, you can get away with your fingernail. But when you get to a large cigar, you really need an implement. You need a cutter of some form. Okay. All right. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, I guess that the only last question I have, and I don't have an example of it here, but it did come to mind because I have one in my house. Well, you have those table cutters that you press down, but they have different sizes, almost like mm -hmm. different Vs. Mm -hmm. is what I recall seeing. Mm -hmm. What's the point of the different V's, the different sizes of them? So V cutters, and I don't know if we can see it in this one. So a V cutter, as you notice, it has a certain depth to it. You can see mm -hmm. it here. I prefer an inverted V versus one that actually creates a point like this. Okay. I find this cuts much cleaner. So V cutters, if you look at the bowl that's in the V cutter here, and you look at the depth of this, the purpose is on a larger cigar, on a Robusto or larger, this cigar, this will cut without damaging. On a smaller ring gauge cigar, similar to our interlude, you'd want a more not as deep and not as large cut Okay. so that you're not creating damage to unravel it. So a lot of those tabletops that you see, and I know the one you're talking about, they kind of have a small and a large, and then next to it, they also have a small and a large straight cut. Right. You know, so yes. it's designed to adapt to the different ring gauges that are out there. Okay. So. All right. Well, great. So if anyone has any questions, uh, David will be glad to answer them. I will answer any that I can answer myself. Or if you have any questions for my dad, Ernesto, he loves answering questions and I always uh, pass them on to him and he answers them himself. Mm -hmm. So let us know and let us know what other videos you're interested in seeing. We'd be glad to uh, plan them for you. So have a great day and you know, keep, keep watching. Take care. Thank you. Take care.